G'day, Grey Clips. Yes, that's right. I'm Australian. I do live here, but I am Australian. For the record, the Geico Gecko is not. I thought it was terrific. I mean, we were hoping for a speaker that would come in that would be engaging, that would be positive, offer some humor, some terrific stories based on experience, and he did all of that. Clearly, I'm not here because I'm an expert on hair, but I have got some pretty cool business stories to share with you today, and that's what I'm going to do for the next couple of hours. I'm also going to put you to work. I know you guys have come to have a business conversation for two or three days here. Let me just make it a little bit more personal for a minute, because this is the stuff that was really important to the real direction of our businesses over the last two decades. This business piece here, it's about making a few bucks. I was okay at that, but this whole life piece that was about me and those I cared about, I was awful. And it wasn't until I actually stopped and thought about it that I realized that was the case. With personal vision, you create purpose. Once you create purpose, you have an understanding of where you're going and a greater clarity of how you're going to get there. Without personal vision, you can't possibly create vision for the businesses that you lead. Right now, I want you to think about what you want out of your business. Whether you own the business or work for somebody else, it's irrelevant. Because if we understand this, now we've got a renewed passion for what the business can do for us. You've found your purpose. This now gives you greater passion because it's working for you. You've got it doing its job. I love the energy. Yeah. yeah, great energy and very intuitive and kind of a deep thinker, which is, it's nice, it's refreshing. And we grow, we invest in growth. We grow, we invest in growth. We grow, we invest. In growth. That's pretty much the cycle we have in business. We go round and round looking for an opportunity to grow the business to the next level to improve our cash flow. But what about the metric of the industry? Things that are happening right now, consolidation, private equity, things that are going on that are making a difference. Change of a CEO with your competitor you heard this morning. That's the stuff we've also got to focus on because it influences not just our business, but our lives. And here's why. Because that stuff also influences the economy. We've got boom, bust, recovery, boom, bust, recovery. That's the economic cycle we all have to deal with day in, day out. And it will have the same cycle. Everyone's sitting around saying, 2008's done. Thank you, I finally got out of that hole and I'm feeling pretty good, life is fantastic. Guess what? It is coming around again. You just hit a very raw point in me. So back to my opening comment, your emotions drive the success or the failure of your business. Here's what that looks like. I love this business, I hate this business. I love my staff, I hate my staff. I love my wife, I love my wife. <laughs> your emotional engagement in the salon has a direct effect on those you lead. Your emotional engagement at home has a direct effect on those you love. It's really simple. So I thought, okay. Got it, understand it, worked out how that affects my business, but who do I need to influence to actually achieve some of these goals? And the simplicity of that was the peers around us, particularly in a multi-outlet environment like this, where you've got three or 400 people you can lean on to help you with some of the issues that you're dealing with. The second group was those we serve, our customers, our guests that come in every single day of the week. And the third group was those we led. It's not just about your staff, it's not just about the people you work with, your colleagues, it's about the 7,000 people that are in this room that's gonna make a difference to your life in the next couple of days. Because here's the deal, the smart guys aren't on stage. Give me a step off for a minute. I gotta tell you, Troy ranks at the top. He just made a connection with the group that was so instantaneous. So let's talk about the next piece that's probably most interesting to you, and that's understanding how we're gonna influence those we serve, the clients we have and the clients we'd like to have. Now we work on three basic words here when we talk about serving people. How can we be more distinctive, more emotive, and more collaborative. Been there, done that. You know, he's, uh, he's lived it, he's walked the walk. For us, if we're gonna be distinctive, we have to anticipate their needs and not just exceed them. 10 years ago, you used to be able to say, uh, we exceed our customers' expectations and that's our point of difference. And that was probably okay until everybody started saying it. And then it lost its equity, it lost its value because all of a sudden, well, everyone's exceeding my expectations now, so they tell me. 
So what makes you so special? And the answer was not a lot. Because you see, I expect you're going to exceed my expectation. It's just what I expect of people these days. If you want to be competitive, give me something to think about. Give me something to be excited about. That's just how we think. I mean, I came up here 50 minutes ago and I know that probably 90% of you were sitting there in the audience going, come on, ball guy, impress me. The unique thing about Troy is that he truly took the time to understand our business. He took his family into the salons. Uh, he had his girls get haircuts. Obviously, he doesn't need the haircut. Uh, and then he talked about elements of our business, comfort, freedom, connection. He clearly did his homework, which made it easier for people to have that dialogue with each other. Let's talk about leadership for a moment, because that's a struggle for all of us trying to lead a business, trying to engage and retain and motivate great staff and, and have them really help us drive our businesses forward. I want an emotional connection with them and my companies, and then that can't help but then translate to an emotional connection with our, with our customers, because they'll feel the energy. Now, just like our children, we ask them to do stuff. Bailey, go find your shoes. Charlie, pick up your toys. And they go, why? Because that's what kids do. Kids ask the question, why? Do you know why they ask why? It's because we don't tell them why we're asking them to do it. And we do exactly the same thing in business. We bark instructions, do this, walk this, talk this, say this, be this, hit that number, hit that target, be that budget, be the, be, the, be the guy that comes first, get that client. But we don't explain how that attaches itself to the vision. So if I said, Bailey, go get your shoes, she'd go, why? If I said, go get your shoes, we're going to the park for the afternoon to play on the playground, she'd go, okay, dad, and she's off. That's exactly the same in your environment. We need to remind ourselves that we can't lead with sound bites. We need to lead with vision. Succinct and to the point. Going through this process, finding our purpose, understanding our passion, influencing people and knowing where to find the hidden profit in the business, we managed to trade out of a million dollar hole and not go broke. And in fact, the business was 30% more profitable in the following year because I had the time to create strategy and make sure we're executing on it. It really connected for me on a personal level on the things that I need to change. Go home, put your hand on your heart, pull out that bit of paper and ask yourself, what are you going to do to embrace evolution? And how are you going to be better tomorrow than you are today? Thanks for spending a couple of hours with me, guys. Good luck in the next 12 months. Have a good day. Thank you.